with uh, hi everyone again. Okay, so for the term paper, uh, you need to basically uh, you need to uh, go and uh, submit it here. So you need to uh, let me just start this submit and go to Dropbox. And in the oh, we have one good. <laughs> it was none none before we started the lecture. So please, so you go there and you submit in one piece of paper, one document, one file, just the name of the topic, and two references, one to two references, uh, that talks about this uh, this topic. That, that's all you need to uh, to do at this stage. You can also upload the references if you want, but you don't have to. If any question about the term paper not clear, please, uh, we can discuss it now before we start the lecture. If any questions, anything not clear about it, about the term paper. Okay, perfect. So now let's start our, our topic today. So I believe everyone can see the screen now. Okay. So what we will discuss today, as I mentioned last week, the high voltage process when you are uh, an engineer working uh, in high voltage area your concentration is on the asset on the component you could be a transformer engineer could be a cable engineer uh, you could uh, be a testing engineer so your focus is in the asset not in the in the system and the first thing you care about is the electric field control you have to be able to control the electric field to certain level in the equipment as we will see. So in our lecture today, we'll start by first uh, having some introduction about the subject. What is electric field control? Why it is important? And we will review some of the terminologies that we use in, the, uh, in that context. Then what are, in a generic way, the common methods we use to control the electrical stress. Okay? So that would be like very generic without going into details. Then, and that is the main topic or the main part of the presentation today is that examples of stress control. So we will pick several examples from the power system assets or part of the asset and see where is the problem and how we can solve the problem or what are the solutions to, to this problem. So to start with, we need to just start by the basics. Starting going back to the uh, fundamentals that we know, electric field, okay, and equipotential lines. Okay, so what is the electric field lines and what is the equipotential line? So if I have an electrode like here, energized from here, high voltage, and here is grounding. So we're applying certain voltage. We're applying here 100 volt, as you can see. Okay. Now those vertical lines, we call them the electric field lines, going from the high voltage to the low voltage. So as you go away from the electrode, the voltage is decreased. So for example, this at this point, the voltage is 75. At this point, the voltage is 50. 25 and finally zero at the ground. So electric field lines are those field lines that stems from, propagate from the high voltage and then they are going or terminate at the, at the ground. Then we have what we call the equipotential lines. So those are perpendicular to the, they are always making 90 degree with the field lines. And in those lines, the electric potential is actually constant. So when you look to this, this line here, this line, this is the, the whole line. At any point in this line, the voltage is constant and it is 75. If you go below, this line here is, again, every point here is actually having the same potential and it is 50 volt. Okay? so. Let's start with what is an electric field line and what is the equipotential line. Okay, now let's move on. Now, the, the, uh, what is the relationship between the electric field 
and the voltage because we know the voltage we apply the voltage we energize the component with certain voltage that could be a distribution level like 11 kilovolt 33 kilovolt or transmission level 132 kilovolt 230 kilovolt 400 kilovolt but what is the electric field because we do not apply the electric field we only apply the voltage but there is a relationship between the two that the electric field in any direction is the negative of the rate of change of the voltage in that direction. So in math, we call it E equal to minus the diversion of V. We don't need to go deeper in the math here, but all you need to know is that the electric field is the rate of a change of the voltage. So if the voltage going from point one to point two, changing very fast, then you will have a high electrical stress. And to just make it or simplify the formula, let's look only in the X direction. So the electric field in the X direction, if you have the electric field is only changing in the X direction, it's basically dV by dx. So, and you will see that in several graphs, when we only take the electric field in one direction. So it is the derivative or it is the slope of the line. Of the voltage. So if the voltage doesn't change with distance, it means that the electric field is equal to zero. Okay. And that is the reason why the electric field inside the conductor is equal to zero. If we have a conductor here, a high voltage conductor energized, this is a high voltage conductor, and it is energized, the voltage at point A, point B, point C is exactly the same. Voltage doesn't change. There is a high voltage, but since the voltage is exactly the same at all these points, the dV by dx is equal to zero. So there is no electric field inside the, the conductor. Now, let's look into uniform and non-uniform electric field. In the uniform electric field, in the middle lines here, how I tell that this is a uniform electric field? So what is electric field is dV by dx. So if I move, let's say from point one, point two, to point three, to point four, okay? So if I go from one to two, the voltage drops from 100 to 75. So we have here a 25 voltage drop. If I go from point two to point three, there is another 25 voltage drop. From point to three to point to four, another volt. So it is the same voltage drop, and the distance is exactly the same. Okay, so that is a uniform electric field. And as a matter of fact, for a parallel plate, except on the edges, the electric field E is equal to V, the voltage that we apply, divided by the distance D between the two electrodes. So anywhere here, the electric field is the same. The voltage is different. The voltage is changing, but the electric field is, is what is called uniform electric field. Now, in most of the apparatus that we have, the power system components, the electric field basically is not uniform. Most of the time is not uniform. And this is an example of the electric field, okay, of a sharp point, around a sharp point. So when you look here, these are the, the dotted lines are the equipotential lines. So when you come to the tip of the uh, of the sharp point, now this is an equipotential line and this is an equipotential line. You will see that the eco these two equipotential lines are very close at the tip, and they start to depart from each other as they go away from the tip. So it means that the electric field here is much higher than the electric field there. So that is what we need to understand that. The electric field basically is the rate of a change of the voltage. When we see that the voltage it, it, uh, goes from one point to another at very short distance, it means here we have here an, a high electric stress. Now, for the designer, which is the one that we have to look into it? Should we look to the voltage or should we look to the electric field? What is the criteria when you select the space between the electrodes? When you select the material, it is basically the electric field, not the voltage. And the reason for that is the following, that the breakdown of all insulating materials 
is basically depends on the electric field. So for example, the air breaks when the electric field is equal to 22 kilovolt per centimeter. So that is the unit of the, of the electric field. Remember, the electric field is the dV by dx. It's a voltage by a distance. So when the electric field reaches that value, we have an air, air, air breakdown. When it comes to the oil, because the oil sometimes is old, sometimes is new, there is a range of the oil. It can go from 100 to 240 kilovolt per centimeter. Now, you can see here that the oil breakdown voltage is higher than the breakdown of air. So that is one of the reasons why we put transformers with oil, not with air, because of the high dielectric st strength of oil so i can apply more field there so meaning that for example if this is my tank of the transformer just as hypothetically and if this is my my winding this is the distance between the high voltage and the ground okay so that is my electric field between the two now if i fill this with air i have to make sure that that the electric field does not exceed this value, otherwise you will start to see arcing inside. But if it is filled with oil, I can have, for, especially for new oil, up to 240 kilovolt per centimeter and could be higher. So, so I can have a smaller distance, smaller size of the transformer. Of course, oil has another advantages, which is it's a very good thermal um, uh, conductive material, meaning it can dissipate the heat from inside the transformer to the to the outside. SF6, for example, has 60 to 70 kilovolt. So in conclusion, as a designer, you have to look to the electric field at the different parts of your component, and you have to make sure that depending on the insulating material you are using in that specific part, that the electric field should not exceed certain values. Now, there are certain points when, when we design the material, they are susceptible to very high electric field. And those are the places where we have to apply the stress control. There we have to add extra things to control the amount of the electric field. Let's start. With the first one, which is we call the triple point. Whenever you have a high voltage electrode here, insulating material, and for example, air, so this is, could be air, could be other material, could be oil. So this point, call it the triple point between three different materials, with material with three different uh, dielectric constants. So you will have here a very high electric field. So here, this is a place that you might start to uh, have some arcing here. If the electric field exceeds the breakdown of the insulating material, if it is air, for example, then you will start to have arcing. So that is one of the uh, points that when you design your electrical component, you have to pay attention to. Also, whenever there is a high voltage, so this is a high voltage conductor, is penetrating through an insulation, but while it penetrates from one media, for example, this is from oil to air, it goes through the, it goes the, the ground. Like for example, a bushing. In the bushing, there's a high voltage coming from outside to the inside. So it has to go through the metallic flange or the tank of the transformer. So this area, when you have a high voltage, this area here comes very, very susceptible to extremely very, very high voltage. So these are two most common two areas where we have high electrical stress in the components, and we need to pay attention when we design the, uh, the, uh, the asset. Now, there are some other reasons for enhancement of electric field, but those are due, for example, to either aging, uh, could be manufacturer defects, uh, could be environmental conditions, and I will give example. But in this part of the course, we concentrate on the things, the, the points that I just like, uh, it's not a defect that you don't know of or not because of the environmental conditions, but because of the nature of the asset that you need to pay attention. I will give just two examples. 
when we have an internal defect. For example, this is an example of an electrical tree inside a cable. So here you will start to have a void here, okay? And this void could be, a, a, as an example, the example here is due to aging, okay? But it could be also due to uh, internal uh, defects. You have an internal void during the manufacturing process, so you will have an air encapsulated inside a dielectric material, and hence that air, because of the difference of the dielectric constant, it will have a very, very high electric field enhancement. Uh, this is a simulation done using console, a software that you would be using for your project. Now, this is the, it's a material here, and here, this is an air void. This is, this is an air void, okay? So we try to see the electric field along the red line here, along this line. So let's say from point A here to point B, and I wanna see what is the electric field along this, uh, along this point. Okay, so we see here the electric field when it comes, to, this is point B. So you see the electric field here that goes from here, from A, to be, and the electric field is, has certain value. Now, when it reaches, approaches the void, it jumps to a very, very high value here. So there's a very high electric field enhancement inside. Now, this is also a gap, air gap. So the dielectric strength, as we have seen, is less than the uh, most of the other, other electrical insulating materials. So you might start to have some arcing inside, some problems there. Also, pollution has an influence to uh, actually cause high electrical stress. So this is, for example, an insulator, and we have water droplets on, on its surface. Now, when, if you just zoom on one of the water droplets here, again, you will, this, is, this is the water, this is water, okay? And this is air here, and this is uh, the insulator. This is the insulator here, okay? So this point here, we call them again the tripling point. But here between water, air, and the electrical insulation. The dielectric constant here is 81, here is one, here is between, let's say, two to five. Okay, so there are differences in the dielectric constants. So basically the general rule here is epsilon one, E1 equal to epsilon two, E2. Now when the electric field goes from one medium to another, that is the formula that governs this electric field. So the water has a very high dielectric constant. So if this is if this is the water and this is here the air. So the water has a very high dielectric constant compared to, to air. Then because of the multiplication, they have equal the electric field here at the at air at the interconnection between the air and the water goes to extremely very high value, as you see here. These jumps in the electric field is at these two. As at these two uh, points. Now, as I said, that, that this is good to understand that you could have an electric field enhancement inside your asset, but that's not due to the design of the equipment, but this is, could be due to as manufacturing defect, aging, or external environmental uh, conditions. Okay, any questions so far? If there's any question, you can write it in the chat. Abdullah can capture that and let me know, or if there is nothing, then we can we just proceed. Okay, so there are common generic methods that we can use to basically control the stress. Okay, and here I'm talking specifically on the stress because of the nature of the arrangement of the high voltage and the electrical insulation uh, material. So one of them is you changing the material properties. So we can redistribute the electric field by adding different uh, material. Is I have a question here. Uh, uh, the air brake switch, basically, it is when you open the switch, you will have an arc, okay? And this arc happens during the opening of the switch uh, because of the, uh, you know, as you move the switch away from its contact, okay? Now, here we have high voltage. This is grounded, the other side. So you have a very little distance here. So you will have a high electric field, 
this high electric field will cause ionization and arcing. Now, as you move the switch away from the ground, you are increasing the distance. So if gradually you are actually elongating the arc, plus you are reducing the electric field until the arcing is extinguished. So that phenomena happens, this breakdown happens because of the mechanism of the, of the opening. But, but this one, it's inevitable. You have, whenever you open the switch in air, you will have this type of, uh, of arcing. Second point is we relieve the stress enhancement by geometry change. If we change the geometry, and we'll see that uh, in the cable joints, for example, you can do that. Uh, use certain devices, we, we talk about corona ring, that to redistribute the electric stress and it can relieve the stress from the point that has very high electrical stress. We can uh, embed some conductor to force the electric field distribution to take certain certain path. And also we can use coating of the material, linear or non-linear material. So we'll see examples of everything here as we uh, as we progress. So we'll start with the bushings. The bushings is something very common. And this is just one uh, schematic and uh, photo of I think the same one. So basically here you see ceramic outside this is the ceramic sheddings oh you see here this cleavage this is i will talk about it later on okay and that pushing you have a, a top cap this is the one here is the top cap okay and here is the flange this is the where you install this so you will have a tank here somehow so this pushing can be used in transformers especially because this is an oil end okay so that in all of this will be inside the oil so this this transformer but this is a transformer bushing actually. Okay, and this one inside you will see a conductor, okay? There is, sometimes it's filled with oil, sometimes there's impregnated paper inside. We'll talk about how we will deal with the electric field inside the bushing. But what I wanna say here, the conductor goes all the way until the end, okay? So that is the way we connect the external wall. So this coming could be coming from overhead lines, Okay, to the transformer. So there is a conductor that's going through the pushing here. And this will be going all the way until it reaches to the winding of the transformer. So the pushing, you can see it as a hollow or a, a conductor that is penetrating from the top, from the high voltage here, uh, starting or from the top to the end. Okay, and this will go to the to your to your transformer winding. This is the air. This is the oil. So this is the area of, of interest. So this is a typical pushing of transformers. Okay. Now, uh, this is a simple uh, distribution type class of transformer. This is the high voltage bushings. And those is the low voltage bushings. We are more interested in the high voltage because there is no issue at all in the low voltage uh, bushings. Now, we use as a material for the bushing <coughs> two different materials. We use uh, porcelain, okay, and this is as again, this is the old technology that we use, and we also use composite material like silicone rubber. This is a new type of uh, of pushings. Now, why we use the pushing? As I said, we first to insulate because, as I said, a conductor has to go through all the way here. Okay, so this you have to insulate it from the external conditions. You cannot have just the conductor going through this. So you want to. Uh, basically to insulate that. So this is one thing. Second thing is that this will go through, this is this is grounded, this is the tank of the transformer. So the conductor will go all the way. Now here we'll have an electrical stress. So we need to somehow see how we can grade the electric stress here. Also to mechanically support the conductor. This is another thing that, that the conductor when it comes here, uh, you need some mechanical uh, object to hold that uh, that conductor. Now we will have to talk about two different types of pushings, the simple one and the condenser type of, uh, of a pushing. So let's start with the simple one. What do we mean by a simple, a simple pushing? Okay. Now again, this is a pushing here. This is the housing of the of the pushing. So this is the corrugations outside. This is the conductor that goes inside. And here this is. This is air here, and this is oil going through oil. Now, this pushing could be also for SF6. So 
could be for a, a, a circuit breaker, not necessarily for a transformer, because we use bushings for, for both, actually. Okay. Now, the internal insulation inside here, you could have air, you could have gas, you can have oil. So this would be like just filled with air or gas or an oil. That is the symbol, the symbol bushing. So there is not, there is no electric field grading happen inside. I just fill it with a different insulating material depending on the, the voltage level or the electric field that is produced inside those bushings. Now, why we have the bushings corrugated here, we, we always see that in the insulators in the bushings. This is to increase the cleavage distance between the high voltage, which is here, to the ground, which is here. Now, when you have an outdoor insulator or a bushing, the main failure mechanism is surface. So you will have a surface uh, flash over or a surface dry band arcing. Okay. That's not, we will, we will talk about these things in detail later on, but this is as a side note. Okay. So when you have pollution here on the surface, then you will have certain uh, the uh, resistance, the surface resistance will be reduced significantly. And if you have high stress enough, you will start to have arcing on the surface. Eventually, you might have a flash over. So you want to increase the distance between the high voltage and the ground. The higher the distance, the higher the resistance, because we know that any resistance is proportional to the, to the link. So as I make the link between the high voltage and the ground longer and longer, I am increasing the resistance, which is in my favor. Now, the, the point here is on how to increase the distance without ex uh, increasing the length of the bushing, Okay, so we use this cleavage uh, uh, or corrugated band or the uh, bushing uh, in, in that uh, in, in that shape. Now, these bushings, the simple ones, are good up to 35 kilovolt. So that is basically the distribution level, the primary voltage level. So up to 33 kilovolt, you don't need to do any stress grading inside inside the bushing. So there's no uh, any uh, requirement for any stress uh, stress grading material here. Now, the, the 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 porcelain basically can be replaced with other materials. We can use epoxy resin. We can have a fiberglass with a suitable housing from silicon rubber. Now this depends on is my bushing to be used inside or outside. Now that has not, has nothing to do with stress grading, but this is the housing material. So sometimes when, if the pushing to be used inside, we don't need to use uh, those uh, long cleavage distances. And also we don't need to use ceramic when we can use a weaker material like uh, an epoxy resin. Okay, so that depends if it is indoor or uh, outdoor uh, type of pushings. Now that flange that you see it here, the mounting flange here, this is where, where is the concern? This is because this is a ground, this is, this is high voltage here, this is high voltage. And this is ground, so this is the, the concern. Now, this also support mechanically the cantilever force because remember there is a high voltage conductor connected here, so there is a cantilever force. Okay, so that also to support the the pushing uh, from this from this force. Now, if you want to see how the eco potential line, and now we understand what the eco potential lines here. Now, this is. 40%, 35%, 30% of the voltage. So this eco potential, so the, the voltage drop from, let's say 40 to 35% is 5%, five, five. So I'm keeping the same, the eco potential lines keep exactly the same voltage drop. So when you look here at this, between these two, 25 and 20%, the distance is basically high. Okay, so we have less electric stress. Now, as you come closer, you see the distance becomes closer to each other. So you have higher and higher electric stress. And you see that the highest electric stress is basically here. That is the highest electric stress that you can see in the in the bushings. Now, if the electric stress here, which is now we understand what is the electric stress, it is the diversion, it is the rate of change of the, the voltage. So here, this is now we can visualize this and see that this is the highest one. Now, if the electric stress exceeds the 22 kilovolt per centimeter, which we just mentioned that this is the breakdown voltage of air, then you will start to have arcing here on the on the surface, and that arcing can, if the housing material is made from polymer, 
it can cause aging, it can cause erosion, damage to the material. If it is from ceramic, it can cause, for example, a flashover that happens on the on the surface. So, but as I said, for 35 kV and below, that is not a concern. The electric field will not reach that level. This is why inside here we don't need to do any stress grading uh, approach. Now, if we just have a look, this is a again a simulation. And that's also just I would like to emphasize the concepts of the difference between the voltage and the electric field. So uh, this is uh, 69 kilovolt pushing. This is the high voltage, of course, here. And here is the ground. This is the flange. OK, so this is a pushing. So the conductor is going all over the place. And so this is the high voltage and this is the ground. This is the ground end here. OK. Now, as you go. Start from zero and start to increase. This is the ground. The voltage start to increase. And in the first 20 centimeter, as you can see here, the increase in the voltage is too much. It goes from zero to 25 kV. Okay. So the electric field here is extremely high because it's again dV by dx. Now, when you look to the middle of the bushing, the change in the voltage is extremely small. Okay. So the dV by dx is very, very small. So in the middle of the pushing, the electric field is really, really, really small. Now, when you go to the high voltage in, then here at this area, this is the high voltage. Now, again, the electric field will increase as well. But the highest electrical stress, as you can see here, is coming from, from that side. Okay, so how to grade that? First, and the simplest way is to use coronary. It's like a donut shape. Okay, uh, so this is like uh, just one cross section area of that. So this is will be like going all over. So it's like a donut like this. We put it around the bushing at the entrance at the area uh, at the uh, near the flange. Okay, so what will happen here? Now we are introducing another material. The electric field lines will be redistributed. Okay, so. Now we have to find what is the best location. And for this, we use again a software like console. We try to where, where, where to put it in the in the X or in the Y uh, direction, where is the best location to optimize the electric field, to minimize the electric field, and try to uh, uh, also the radius of the material. We want to if, if we want to optimize the, the material used as well. So there is this is like an optimization problem. People trying to uh, to do that uh, to find the best location to minimize the electric stress on the surface. Uh, now, as you I progress as I progress in our lecture today, I'm actually throwing different ideas for the project. Okay, because the project it will you will select it. It will be you will be using console software, which I will be sending a link how to install it uh, after this class. Okay, so I'm just throwing certain ideas for you and you select something of your interest. You bring a system and you try to simulate that. You can bring a system from your own or you can take something from a paper and just re, uh, redo it again. But we'll talk about the project in details later on. Now, there is a price you have to pay when you add coronaring as your uh, stress grading medium. What is this price? Now, in this, this is a 345 kilovolt oil filled circuit board. Okay, so we have a corona ring at the high voltage side. This is a corona ring here, and we have at the grounding end. Okay, and you, as you have seen here, the corona ring is a bit elevated from the level of the ground. Okay, so you are increased, there is an increase in the distance here, and it goes a little bit down here. So you are basically when you use a corona ring, this you are reducing the flash over distance. So the flash over distance, and this is one of the criteria when you design an insulator or uh, pushing, there's something called the dry flash over, which is a distance between the high voltage and your, your ground. Okay. Now this distance has been reduced because you are bringing the top bush, the top uh, corona a little bit down. And the bottom line, which is connected to the grounding end, to a little bit up. So the distance between the the high voltage side 
and the ground has been has been uh, reduced. So then you have to increase the bushing size to compensate for for that. So that is the first way to do uh, field uh, uh, control by using the coronary. The second one, which is the most common one, is to use what we call condenser bushing. Okay? So that is the 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 uh, actually the uh, the most common one. Anyone by chance, just uh, let me be a bit, a bit more interactive. I'm, I talk too much here. What is the word condenser mean? You know what is a condenser mean actually? If I understand the meaning of the condenser, then you will be able to uh, to understand the mechanism that that is working well. Condenser means capacitor. Okay. So when you have a uh, when when uh, the capacitor, another name of it is called a condenser. Okay. So basically, we are creating certain capacitance within the insulating material. Okay. As we will see here. We know you look to the bushing. So this is your uh, your bushing here. This is your high voltage conductor that's going all the way. This is your grounding end here. This is your ground. And here is the this is the, the area of interest. Okay, so we'll see how, how this happens. Okay? As I said, this is the most common bushing, the condenser type of, of bushings. So we insert here aluminum foils. So these Vertical lines you see these ones, these are all aluminum foils. Okay. Now, when you insert an aluminum foil, basically you are creating a more uniform electric field. You are creating equal, you are forcing the, the voltage to be constant because now you are having a conductor. Let's say let's look this one from point one here to point two here. So the potential across the whole thing will be constant, will not be varying because you are putting a foil, a conductor. So it will pick a potential, but the potential will be the same, constant. The potential here will be also constant. Okay, so then you are controlling the electric field because, because what is electric field? It is dV by dx. So I am now controlling the distribution of the voltage. I am forcing the voltage to be certain value I'm controlling the distance between these voltage levels that I am setting using the foil. So then I am controlling actually the uh, the electric uh, field. Okay. So as I said, as we energize the pushing, then those uh, aluminum foil will have uh, equal potential uh, cylinders, and you will have here. Uh, this is comes the, the 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 term condenser because what is a capacitor? Capacitor basically when you have two conductors with different potential between them is an electrical insulation. That is the capacitor. So we are creating here many capacitors. Okay, and this is why it's called uh, condenser bushings. So this is called capacitively graded. Now we are grading the the field inside by using this principle of capacitive gradient. Let's have a look how the electric field would look like and the equipotential lines when we have this capacitive gradient when, when we don't, okay? So to the right of this, this is bushing, this is graded, and this is ungraded. So let's look to the ungraded one and pay attention to this. This is 25, 50, 75, these are the equipotential lines, okay? So the voltage here at the conductor is 100%. So these equipotential lines, the 75%, the voltage is whatever the voltage here is 75% of that. This is 50%, this is 25%. So the distance between each of those is exactly the same, okay? So when you look here, you will see that at this point here, the electrical stress is high. Here, the electrical stress is very high. Go, See, the distance between 25 and 0 is extremely small. Now, when you are capacitive degrading it, you are forcing the 25% to be at that at that foil. Okay. So you see here the distance between the 75 and is, is extremely uniform. Okay. So you are you are controlling in the electric field. You are enforcing the electric field to take certain certain distribution by inserting those. Uh, those aluminum 
Now, sometimes also we fill the, uh, the condenser bushings with oil, okay? So when we fill them with oil, that will give more strength. We have seen that, that the breakdown of, uh, of air uh, is much, much less than the breakdown of oil. So oil has high dielectrical strength. So to even increase more the strength of the uh, bushing, we fill it with, uh, with oil. Now, this te the coming two uh, technologies, they are, I'm aware of them uh, because they are at the research level. They are still not yet uh, at the commercial. Okay. Condenser bushing is the one, uh, sometimes the corona ring. Now, here what we do, and this is one of the generic forms of controlling the electric field by using a material with a different dielectric constant. Okay. So basically, here, you put this material here, you put a material that has a different dielectric constant. And this can be used with silicon rubber housing, not with the ceramic ones, because in the ceramic one is the one that suffers the most when we have high electrical stress, because you will start to have some arcing on the surface and because of the in, uh, organic nature or the organic nature of the, of the rubber, it will age very fast compared to porcelain. Okay, so basically, what we try to do here now in A, we have everything from silicon rubber. The electric constant is 2.5. Here we are, this material, this side of the material is a different material. We add it here for the grading, and basically, we are adding uh, rubber filled with or added to it barium uh, titanate. Uh, PATIO3, this will have a higher dielectric constant. So when you have this, you are forcing the electric field lines to go through materials with higher and then with lower. That will you cause some diffractions of the electric field lines, okay, as it moves from one medium to another, and that controlling the or deviating the path of the equipotential lines will make the electric field more uniform. So if we have a look here, when we have a bushing that is, doesn't have any stress grading, that this is the X, this is the X direction, this is the, and this is the electric field. So the electric field is extremely high at the grounding end and then goes down. If I use a material with K means the dielectric constant, K, is actually epsilon r, the dielectric constant of the material. So if I use K, I, I drop the voltage level or the electric field level from 10,000 uh, or 10 kV per centimeter to less than 6 kV. If I increase the material further, I drop that further to uh, uh, 4 point something kilovolt per, uh, per centimeter. So there is significant drop in the electric field. But again, this material so far, uh, as far as I know, it is more of research because it has some other issues that need to be resolved. And one of them, how to withstand the, uh, the electrical or the environmental stresses outside them. They are not good yet to deal with that. Another way is to add a resistive base pushing. Now, what is resistive glaze? This is also used for insulators as well. So here you add a resistive uh, layer to that, a material that has certain resistivity that will allow a very small current to flow on the surface of the, of the bushing. Now, these materials in the 60s, 70s were very common, but then what happened, people start to realize that they sometimes go out of control. You want to control the amount of the current, but because of aging, the current goes increases to higher level. And then you will have what we call thermal runaway situation. When you start, the, there is a increase in the temperature without any control, which will damage the blades of the, of the insulators. So yes, that technology was used in insulators and bushings for a long time, but not anymore. I, I, I'm not aware of if it's still used. It's uh, maybe in all bushings or all insulators, but it's not very common nowadays. But again, now when you allow a current to go here on the very, very small current, you are redistributing the 
uh, electric field lines and the equipotential lines. And you can see here, as far as I can keep those equipotential lines far away from each other, then I am actually controlling the electrical, electrical stress. Instead of six pushings, this is a 230 uh, kilovolt substation, okay? And these are bushings uh, filled with gap. This is, uh, I took this picture long, long time ago in United Arab Emirates. So this is an entrance of the uh, 230 kilovolt uh, substation, okay? So this is the high voltage energized end, okay? So the conductor will go inside here. Okay, and we'll go through all of this, but this is filled with SF6 gas. Now, SF6 gas is basically a very good, we have seen that it's a high electrical insulating material. And why is that? Why SF6 is a good insulating material? I mean, without going into details, SF6 is called an electronegative gas. Okay, what does it mean, an electronegative gas? Okay, now, what is arcing? Arcing is a flow of electrons, okay? Now, normal materials, when they absorb an electron, they will be at what we call an excited state, okay? So they are not stable. So if they absorb an extra electron, they have to release it, okay? Is it sex? No, absorb electrons and yet stays as a stable material. Now, that is the big advantage of the uh, of uh, SF6. Why is that? Because an arc is nothing but the flow of electrons. So if you can absorb those electrons, then this will be uh, very good in terms of providing uh, good insulating or quenching the arc if it happens uh, inside inside those uh, uh, those uh, bushings. Or on, not necessarily bushing, even inside the GIS system. Okay, so this is an SF6. Uh, filled. So this is filled with SF6. Uh, this is uh, epoxy glass. Uh, this, uh, now here, uh, this is the weather shared material. This is most likely silicon rubber material. And there is, because silicon rubber mechanically, they are not strong. It's not like uh, porcelain. So they will be inside here, a tube of epoxy glass. But because the epoxy glass is not a good for the external environmental condition, we cover it with the weather uh, shield, which is the uh, the silicon rubber, which is much better, uh, more stable material under uh, outside conditions. This is the conductor here. This is the atmosphere. Here is our high voltage, and here is our our ground. So it's it's going inside inside that. Okay. Now I could have this is completely from ceramic as well. Okay. So the external material has nothing to do with the stress grading. Okay. Now. Now the objective here that if there is any electrical transit, any arcing happens here, that we want to protect. Because when, whenever there is an arc inside, there is a pressure, okay? So this epoxy glass fiber will also, uh, other than giving you a mechanical strength, it's, uh, it's basically, if there is any transit happened, it also prevent any explosion or any uh, damage that happened due to uh, this. Conductor, it has usually very high current because remember those are the GI system. So this is where at the transmission level, so you have very, very high current going going there. Okay. Now the inner space, this all space is filled with SF6 under pressure also, which increase the dielectric strength of SF6. So SF6 is basically replaced oil. We used to use oil for uh, circuit breakers when I was like in uh, studying at the university and uh, early my career, we used to have a circuit breaker uh, filled with oil. And SF6 was somehow at that time, uh, I'm talking about here uh, early 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, SF6 was a relatively new technology, but the problem that using oil in a circuit breaker, it has an issue that every time you open a switch, there will be an arc, okay? And this arc, because the oil, the, it is a hydrocarbon material, it will release some carbon inside. So after a certain time of opening the breaker, could be opened intentionally, because if you, you want to open the, the system, or, or because of the protection system works, okay? So you will see that it comes with the catalog that this uh, breaker has uh, or the oil inside the breaker has a life of, let's say, 100 switches. After 100 switches, 
because of a lot of carbon has been produced, the integrity of the oil becomes much less as an insulating material, then you have to either recycle the oil or you have to replace the oil. Now, what you do with the old oil, that's an issue. Oil, uh, especially mineral oil, is not a good uh, degradable material. So this is why people now moving to the, to the SF6. Now, currently, SF6 has another issue. We were talking about it's a green, green gases, okay? So people are trying to replace SF6 with something else, but still all of this is uh, under under study. So for medium voltages, this is all you need to have. SF6 under pressure. Now, once you increase the high voltage, we use here a troid here. If you see here, this is to redistribute the electric field here. So here we are inserting certain metallic structure with certain geometry so that the electric field lines here will be redistributed. So this is how you can release the, the pressure. Sorry, the electrical stress. Wall bushings, okay? Wall bushings are used in uh, several uh, setups. A wall, this is a wall, as you can see here. And for example, if you have like, a, if you go to Kinetrix, sometimes you have a very high voltage and you don't, you cannot have it contained inside. Then you have to take the high voltage. This is a generator. We'll talk about generators next week. So you are taking the supply from here to the outside because uh, the level of voltages that you can have is extremely high. Physically, you cannot contain the equipment that you want to test inside here. So you have to take the high voltage through the wall uh, and uh, uh, through a bushing, okay? Now, these bushings are for testing, and we will learn one of the requirements for the testing. We don't use high current. We use very high voltage, but because we are testing insulating materials, we are not expecting actually to have extremely uh, high current, okay? So that is one of the things that we uh, we, we consider when we have, uh, there is no high temperature here, okay? But there is only high high voltage. Usually these pushings are condenser type of, of a pushing. Now also for DC, now if you wanna do, uh, this is uh, DC conversion, so this is coming from an AC system inside. So again, you need to take the, uh, the high voltage from inside, which is coming from an AC system through the walls to uh, the fire circuit to change the, the AC into a DC system. So again, you need uh, wall bushings. Now those bushings are filled, usually filled with oil and they suffer from like oil leaks, contamination problems like the insulators. Uh, and uh, whenever there is non-uniform distribution in the field, you will have also some uh, some issues with uh, with the RFE. Okay, I will uh, pause here. Give like uh, yeah, pause the uh, the recording. Okay, so we'll come back. So now we'll talk about some other uh, basic uh, techniques, some other assets, how we can do the stress controlling. First, we need to understand why there is an issue there. Go back to the original generic uh, problems when we have high voltage insulation arrangement, and then see how we can do this, deal with this. We'll talk about the stress control on rotating machines, more specifically on induction machines induction motors, okay? So that's, let's first understand the problem. So this is the stator of the induction uh, machine. So it's made from silicon steel uh, or any uh, magnetic material, okay? So we are inserting here inside, we are inserting the winding, okay? And this is called a wound form winding. It's a random winding for low voltages. But for high voltages, we use this type of uh, of winding. So each one, each one, this is a coil. Okay. Now, the the core is grounded. You can see here, this is the core material is grounded, and this is high voltage. So you are inserting a high voltage conductor. Yes, it is insulated, but through a grounded structure. So that is you, uh, an area with a very high electrical stress. You have high voltage with insulation and adjacent to it, close proximity to it, you have a ground structure. So you are moving from 
very high voltage to ground in a very short distance. So here we have a very high electrical stress. Now, if you zoom a bit here and look here more on this schematic, so this is the core. This is where you use your core uh, material. And here is the, the winding that coming out of it. So this is a very, very high electrical stress. Now, we use different types of insulating materials. We use something with the ground wall insulation. We use turn to turn insulation. And this black tape, this is a conductive uh, semicon materials or a conductive tape. And here we have a stress grading material. So let's understand the consequence of this, why there is a problem, how things are moving, uh, and why we need each one. So we look here again, this is a similar uh, configuration of uh, the uh, installation of the uh, induction motors. So this is the stator wall. So this is this is this. This is this. Okay. Then we have the, the winding coming out of it. So A, we have a semiconductive slot coating here. So it's extended. Then B is the stress grading coating. Okay. And C is the wall insulation. And here is, these are the conductors and we have here turn to turn insulation. So that's in a very simple way, how is the, the structure is, is good, is, is done, okay? So we use, as an insulation, we use mica. Mica has a very important advantage because there is, there will be partial discharge inside the insulation of, uh, of the rotating machines, but mica is extremely strong material. It can withstand the partial uh, partial discharge. So mica is a standard material. We use it in the in the insulation. Now the semiconductive material, which is this one, is nothing but a material loaded with carbon. Carbon is a conductive material. So basically, you are extending the ground. So this becomes like a grounded structure. So you are extending that. Okay outside your core. So the core here is grounded. When you have attached to it a semiconductive layer, so it's sort of you are you are having the same potential, the zero potential. So this is all of it will be will be grounded. Okay. So we are avoiding here the high electrical stress by forcing the coating here to have uh, similar electric stress. Now you will have a problem after that. So you because this is high voltage here, and this is ground, so you have a high electrical stress here. So now here comes the stress grading material. So after that, we use, uh, there are two different types of materials. The old one, which is silicon carbide, and the new one is the zinc oxide. This is the material, the zinc oxide, we use it for surge arrestor. So these are two non-linear, uh, this is uh, both resistive materials. But the zinc oxide is a non-linear material that can be used to to uh, to grade the stress. Let, let's have a look how the electric field distribution and how the voltage distribution will be when we have no stress grading and when we have a stress grading uh, material. So when you look here, let's have a look here. So we have here, this is the high voltage. Okay, so let's start from here. This is your high voltage here. Okay, so there's a conductor. On top of the conductor, there is an insulation. And here is the ground wall. So that is the area of problem. So what we do here, we, we use here the semicon here, and here we have our stress grading material. This is our stress grading material, okay? Now, if you look to the uh, voltage versus distance, so we are taking the voltage actually uh, from the start uh, along this, uh, along this. This is our voltage. So without a stress grading material, you, if you remove this, you are going from basically from zero, which is the extension of the ground uh, wall. This is grounded. The semicon is also grounded. So the voltage will be zero, 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 zero until you reach to the high voltage. And here you have a huge jump from here to there. And so very high jump in a very short distance. The voltage goes from zero to to the voltage that you are applying. And if you look to the red line, this is the electric field. This is basically the derivative of this, okay? So you see here a very high electric field here, 
And this is the threshold, uh, 30 kilovolt or 3 kilovolt per millimeter or 30 kilovolt per centimeter. This is under DC. Under RMS is 22 kilovolt. But this is done, this simulation was done under DC. Okay, so you already exceeded on the surface the threshold of the arcing of the uh, uh, of air. So then you start to have an arcing on the surface. Now with the stress grading material that you have here, basically you will have a gradual. It's, it's gradually increasing here. It doesn't go jump. So when when you have this gradual increase of the voltage from zero from the ground end, okay. To, to the high voltage, you will have the electric field much, much less than, than that, okay? Let's understand more how this is happening. So here is the, we try to model this as a transmission line model, okay? The transmission line model, you have a series components and you have shunt components, okay? So you have the Y as the shunt, okay? So this is your screen, okay? This is your, this is your, high voltage here, this is the conductor, and here is the screen with the, with the ground. And here is the grading impedance, okay? This is the stress grading material when you use a resistive stress control on the, on the surface of the machine uh, insulation, okay? So all the Y represent the coupling capacitors between the high voltage and the insulation, okay? So this is because, as I mentioned here, there is ground insulation, so all these, these are all capacitors here. This is all capacitor. This is because of the insulation. This is the Y, uh, these all the, these Ys, okay? But the Zs that you see them here, these are the resistive uh, impedance of the, of the material, of your grading material, okay? So when, ha when you have this, now you'll have a voltage here, definitely, and a voltage there, and the voltage there, and as you progress, the voltage is dropping because you have here, an impedance in this way, so there is no sudden jump from the ground to the high voltage end, okay? So with this, you are grading this, grading the voltage, and it doesn't jump to a very high value all at once. Here, for example, another way to look into it, this is a motor coil potential distribution, okay? So this is for 13.8 kilovolt line to line. So line to neutral divided by, uh, by root three, again here, this is the semiconductive coating, which is basically zero. The voltage is zero, and here in the stress grading, you you are you having a very smooth increase of the of the voltage as you as you go higher and higher. Okay. Now there is an issue with the motors, and this issue is still under a lot of research. Now this jump or this gradual increase of the electrical stress at power frequency, 60 or 50 hertz. You will have this, okay? Now, the issue now, as you know, or you might know, that many motors now are, we are using power electronics to control them. We don't use the 50, 60 hertz anymore. Uh, we use a PWM signals, which has fast pulses. Uh, thanks to the development of power electronics, now we can have uh, complete control using PWM at a very high voltage, okay? So that will result in an issue uh, that even with the stress grading material, you will have very high electrical stress. And in this simulation, uh, we are trying to simulate pulses with different rise time. And you want to see how the electrical distribution look like. Okay, now remember our interest is to make the lines far away from each other. So this is the slot end, this is the semicon coating, and here is the stress grading material, and this is the high voltage here. So when you use a pulse with a rise time of one microsecond, this we see here at this, this point, there is some high electrical stress. Okay, now as you increase sorry, reduce the rise time, have much, much, much faster pulses, and you start to have a very high electrical stress here, much, much higher, which results in premature failure of the, of the machines when we work at very fast uh, pulses. So as I said, this is an open uh, problem, and a lot of research is trying to improve the insulating material, improve the 
some people work on the insulating materials some people are uh, trying to improve uh, the stress grading material and there is uh, research in in both uh, both directions now we'll move to another asset which is the cables now in cables cable as a cable is no issue with it the technology so far is mature enough well established it is no issue however you you because the length of a cable that you can make usually in one drum is around 500 meter okay so you cannot have one drum with let's say five to ten kilometer if you want to have the cable length at that so basically what you need you have to connect cables together okay now these cable connections happens through cable joints now unlike the cables, which is usually done at a factory, the cable jo joints are done basically in the site. So there are many issues here uh, in the cable joints, and this is the weakest points in, in, the, in the cable. So now I'm, I will not talk about the defects that happens because of the man, bad manpower at the site and the issues, but we want to stress uh, we need to uh, grade or we want to decrease control the stress at these cable cable joints so cable joints is considered as the weakest point in the in the cable also once you want to terminate the cable you have to connect it for example to a bushing okay then there's cable terminations the same issue with the joint is there as also on the termination so this is how a cable uh, joints looks like or cable splice sometimes we use this so these the two cables here we connect them here okay this is how they look from uh, this is how they look in the field actually okay so there is a stress grading here happens and we'll see why we have high electrical stress on those cable uh, joints this is cable termination okay so here you uh, for example this is a, a box of a transformer so the cables comes here and then you have to terminate it to connect it to the to the bushings here also spacers here is coming from uh, overhead lines to the underground cables uh, this is also a weak point usually uh, coming when you come from uh, overhead lines to underground cables so let's first understand what is the issue of the cable uh, and then let's understand how we solve this issue now cable itself comes with a semicolon layer it comes also with a screen okay now if you look to the cable itself basically so this is your conductor of the cable on cable this is cable a you want to connect it to cable b here this is cable b and you add the connectors here of course to do that you have to strip down the insulation the xlb so the insulation will be stripped here. We have XLBE here. If you assume XBE cable, same thing here. XLBE. And on top of that, there's the screen here. The screen is the ground. Here is the ground. The screen here. And is there's the screen on top of that. Now, it's high voltage here. Ground there. So this is extremely high voltage because there's air here. So I want to stress or grade the stress in these very highly stressed areas. So we look here, basically, this is the screen. This is the high voltage. And these are the equipotential lines. You see here, as you come closer to the, to the uh, this is the electrical installation. Okay. As you come closer, you see here that equipotential lines becomes very, very close to each other. Means what? It means we have a very, very high electrical stress. Let me show you this simple experiment we did here. So this is an this is the XLBE, XLBE material here. Uh, this is the semicon. This is the semicon material. Semicon. The conductor, the black one. And this is the shield that we talked about. Okay. So we energized the cable. And let's look to this area here. You see this. This is basically uh, we use an ultra uh, violet camera or image intensifier so those greens that you see them this is basically or arcing or partial discharge because we have here very high electrical stress 
this is a ground okay this is a ground also because uh, this is nothing but semicolon so the potential here if this is ground this will be also grounded and we have the high voltage so in this area you will have extremely high electrical uh, electrical stress now how to do let's understand that let's use some uh, borrow some concepts from circuits and then let's apply that okay so let's see when we don't have any sort of uh, stress grading material so we look to this picture here to the left okay, just we look here now okay so we have the high voltage conductor here this is the xlbe of course we can use different materials like ebr uh, polyethylene uh, any any type of insulated material but xlbe cross-linked polyethylene is the uh, the most common one used nowadays and here is the silicon shield which is this the black black one so here is the electrical stress now let's understand that from the circuit perspective so here we have a high voltage and here we have a ground okay so from the high voltage to the surface here you have a capacitance okay a capacitance of the cable and then from point b to point a which is grounded here you have basically another capacitance through air okay so that is so we can look to it as two impedances impedance z2 okay which is basically the impedance that we have through the cable and the other impedance is between the surface to the to the ground okay so the voltage that is applied when there is no grading material is nothing but using voltage division we can do that what is the voltage division it's very straightforward if you have a high voltage here Okay, and we have two impedances or resistances in series. The voltage across this is the main voltage V. So it is V if this is R1 and this is R2. So V that is V1, we call it here, is equal to V times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if R2 is extremely high, most of the voltage you will see it here. Okay, now, and this is the case here. Now, C1 is much, much less than C2. Why is that? Because this is air, and this is dielectric material. So the capacitance of the, the dielectric material is, is higher. Hence, Z1 will be much, much higher than Z2, because Z is equal, proportional to one over C. Okay, so you will have, a, most of the voltage is, will have here okay so you will have extremely high electrical stress here and this is the reason why we have seen the corona discharges the partial discharges on the surface of the material so now this is why we add the stress grading material when we add we are controlling the impedance between the the surface of the insulation to the semicolon Okay. And you can see here even there is an overlapping between between the two. Now the stress grading material comes with different. I could grade this using a resistive, okay, uh, more resistive component here, or capacitive. And we'll see that we have these two. We could have uh, we could have a resistive or capacitive. But the point here, I'm controlling Z1 instead of having Z1 much much larger than Z2, and have all the stress there. No, I'm reducing. Z1 by controlling its uh, its resistivity. So that is in a very simple way how the stress grading material actually uh, works. So when you look here, this is a resistive layer control. Okay. Now now we understand what is go gonna happen. So my stress grading material is resistive. So it means when we say resistive means it has certain resistance. So there will be some sort of an R here. Okay. Now we use different materials like silicon carbide, carbon black, but again the ZNO or the zinc oxide material. That this is the this is called nonlinear resistance. This is the most common man, one used, and these are the material used in surge arrestor and barrister uh, materials. So that is the uh, where is the technology stops right right now. Another way of doing this, we can use material with high dielectric constant. So this is 
high resistive, it's a resistive layer. Here we use a high dielectric constant. Instead of only relying on the dielectric constant of air, now I will have a material with a high dielectric constant, which will increase the capacitance, which will reduce the impedance, and hence reduce the, uh, the, the stress uh, between the surface of the insulation to the to the silicon uh, material. And we look here to the equipotential lines. You can see here there are, if we compare it to this one, for example, the first one we started with, see how the field is really bad here. Now, when you look to, to the capacitive uh, material, the equipotential lines are well spaced between each other, and this will lead to, uh, to a lower uh, uh, electrical stress at the point of, uh, of interest. The last one that we use, and we use this technology uh, only for uh, relatively low voltage cables, meaning like distribution level. We don't use this technology at high voltage uh, levels uh, because it's not feasible, which is basically using like a cone here. Okay? So the grading happens not because we are using high directly constant. We are changing the capacitance by changing the, the geometry of the as we know, in a simple capacitor, C is equal to epsilon zero, epsilon R, and then A over D. So C depends on two things, either the dielectric constant of the material or the dimension of the material. So I can play with the capacitance by playing with either the epsilon R, which is in, this is here using high dielectric constant material, or by changing the geometry, then we can have uh, uh, a high again, we increase the capacitance, but now by adding extra geometry to the material. As I said, this is a bulky solution. So that is a good solution only when you have uh, the voltage is at a lower, lower level. Okay, we are almost there. So we have two more assets. We need to talk about polymer insulators and then the GIS equipment. So let's talk about polymer insulators. Now, let's talk about ceramic insulators. Now, ceramic insulators, the technology we use here, we use cap and pin insulators, okay? Uh, this is, could be uh, porcelain or it could be glass, okay? So, this is uh, insulation, and, and here, this is insulation. So, this is, could be porcelain or glass, but here, this is metal. This is metal, and this is metal. Okay. So basically, you have metal, another metal, and between them, the electric material. So this is nothing but a capacitor. This is how we model. Okay. So again, here, this is uh, this is glass. This is there is a metal here, a metal up, metal up, metal down. This is glass. So this is a capacitor. So as if when you look to the cab and bin insulators, you have having capacitors in cascade, capacitors connected in in series. That is how how they, uh, they look like, okay? Now, that will, now we understand. If you remember in the bushing, when we have uh, condenser bushing, we have capacitive grading, okay? But that is artificially made, okay? Now, in the carbon bin insulators, naturally they do exist, okay? So the voltage will be graded actually naturally without our interference, okay? And let's have a numerical example to demonstrate this. Imagine that we have here a 33 kilovolt line to line insulator. It has five disks, and we want to see the voltage distribution across each disk. Okay, so this is the cross arm. Here it is. This is the high voltage. So it's coming here. This is the high voltage coming from, from, from this side. So this is the ground. This is the cross arm coming from the tower. Okay, so this is your tower. Okay, so the tower is here. Tower. Okay, so this is grounded structure. Okay, so and these are here is the high voltage. This is your high voltage or your conductor. So we have one, two, three, five disks. So we have one, two, three, four, five capacitors in series. But there is also capacitance between the high voltage side or the conductor side and the tower because the tower is grounded between the high voltage or the insulators and the tower there is air okay so it is like a capacitor again what is a capacitor you have two 
different potentials, metal potentials between them, there is a dynamic material. So there is also a capacitance between, between them. And we assume that this capacitance is 0.1, the capacitance of the, of the insulator itself. So let's see how, how we will uh, solve, solve this, okay? Now, the capacitance current in the first string, which is this one here, is two by FC V one. Now, Z C is equal to one over the magnitude of that one over omega C, which is equal to one over two pi F C. Omega is okay. Now the current I is equal to the voltage divided by Z C as a magnitude, okay, which is equal to V divided by 1 over 2 pi Fc, which is equal to your the voltage times 2 pi Fc. This is why we said here that the current in the first, so this is your current, uh, and the current would be going actually in that direction because this is V, this is ground, so it's going up, okay? So that is your, your current 2 pi Fc V1. Capacitance of the second string here, which is now the voltage here is V2. Now we want to find V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. That's what we want to find. So the current here is the current that goes in the string here is 2 by Fc V2. And then the capacitance here between the uh, this conductor and the tower is Ce, which is 0.1 C. So we have three currents. We apply KCL. Okay, so the current that's coming here, this current, we have a current there, so this is higher than there. So this current, I will call it I1, this is I2, and this is I3. So I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. This is your I1, this is your I2, this is your I3. Now you can substitute here. You can simplify, remove the C, so we'll get this equation. V2 equal to 1.1 V1. Now we will repeat that KCL at every single node. So we'll have one, two, three, four nodes. So we will have four KCL equations. Now without deriving the same equations, I will just show you the equations here. So this is the second equation. This is comes to this. This is the third and the fourth equation. We need one last equation, which is the KVL, which is V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 plus V5, equal to the line to ground voltage, which is 33 divided by root 3. We have five equations, five unknowns. We solve for that, and this will give me these voltages. These are the voltage levels that we will have. Okay. Now, if I draw this as a function of the number of strings, this is your potential. You see here that the slope is almost constant. If the slope is constant, it means that the voltage, the electric field is also constant. And why is that? Because of the inherent uh, stress grading that happens in the ceramic insulators. Okay, now, if we look to the polymer insulator, we don't have this grading. The polymer insulators, they are not graded this way. Because the whole insulator basically it looks like one capacitor. Okay? And that will lead to very high electrical stress near the energized end. And this is what we call corona cutting. Because of the corona, because of the stress here, you are damaging the material. And remember, this is rubber. So they are not as strong as the ceramic. When we try to see the electrical field without any stress grading, you see here at both the energized end and the grounded end, you will have very high electrical stress. It is 17 kilovolt per centimeter, and here's 15 kilovolt per, per centimeter. So we use corona ring. That is the standard way of controlling the uh, uh, electric field at the energized end. Now, at, 100, at less than 132 kilovolt, the practice was not not to use corona ring, but now recently we will start to use less than. So this is for uh, less than. Sorry, less than that. Okay. Now, if you uh, between uh, at two thirty kilovolt, 
you use corona ring at the energized end. At 400 kilovolt and higher, you use corona ring at both ends, at the energized end and at the grounded end. So this is the electrical stress with and without for this 230 kilovolt corona ring. And you can see here, it's the echo potential line. See here in this area, very condensed, and you have very, very high electrical stress. Now you are moving the electrical stress away from this, from this area, and you see here there is an electrical stress here. But even if there's something happening here, now it depends on the radius of curvature of the corona ring. You can avoid the, the bigger the corona ring, the the uh, less the electrical stress will be on the surface. But even if there is something happening here, this arcing on a metal, okay, it's noisy, yes, okay, it's power loss, yes, very little power loss. However, it doesn't harm the insulator. You are taking the electrical stress away from the insulator surface so that it will not harm the uh, organic uh, material. Now here, th this is, shows you the electric field, not the potential. With and without, so see here the electrical stress is going 20 kilovolt per centimeter without uh, any uh, type of uh, stress grading, but with it reduced to much less value. Now, this is done, and this is something I'd like to uh, remind you without going into details that this field calculation was done under clean conditions. There's no water. We mentioned that before that water. In the environment, water droplets is inevitable because these are in at outdoor conditions. So, if the electrical stress as such for a clean insulators, what will happen if it is polluted? There will be a further increase in the in the electric field. So that is also something that designer they have to pay attention to when they deal with the with insulators. Again, this is another uh, field uh, equipotential lines for uh, an insulators uh, without corona ring. See here, how, how condensed is this? So, and this is the electric field. This is the echo potential lines. And here you see the electric field reach to extremely high, high values. Now, when I use a corona ring, see the maximum drops from 98.9 volt per meter to 49. So it's half when I use the corona, corona ring. And you see here, look to the echo potential lines here. Compared to this, so the competition lines are distributed much better than this condensed compared to the compared to the other one. The last asset we will talk about is the spacer. Very little I will mention about the spacers. Now, what is a spacer here? Now, this is your bus. This is your high voltage, okay? and this is the outside grounded structure. So you have a high voltage here. You have a ground structure, how to hold the insulator, then you will have the spacer. Those are the, the spacers. There are different designs. Okay, these are tri-post insulators. Now, remember when we talked about the tripling point, this is high voltage, this is insulator, and this is SF6. Okay, so this will become extremely high, uh, high uh, stressful area that you can, can lead to some. Uh, surface discharge or even a flash over happens inside uh, your SF6. So you have to pay attention to grade the electric field. Uh, this. this is how the GIS uh, looks uh, from, uh, from outside. So if you look here, this is the epoxy spacer okay, that we have. This is, it's a, in, in a gas. So the tripling point here, so I talked about, this is the, uh, the high voltage here. This is your high voltage. Uh, this is the SF6, and this is the epoxy. Here we have a very, very high electrical stress that can lead to initiate breakdown in that in that area. How to do that? We basically sometimes one one way to do that. There are some other ways. I will just mention one. You insert uh, a met the metal here that you insert uh, in such a way that you redistribute the lines when you have this shape. So here, by changing the shape of the electrode or ins inserting a metal here, you are redistributing the electric equipotential lines, and you have a much better uniform distribution of those equipotential lines, and then you will have a much uh, better uh, electric field uh, control. So I will stop the recording.